Um, we're talking about unethical amnesia. We're going to dive in deep to some things that I think are going to be really insightful. So let's do some reading. Here we go. People are prone to repeat dishonest acts because the human subconscious deliberately, deliberately suppresses memories of unethical behavior scientists have found. Like, for instance, fiddling expenses, cheating the tax man, and even extramarital affairs are all less likely to be remembered than virtuous acts because of the phenomenon of, here we go, unethical amnesia, according to researchers at Harvard and Northwestern universities. These include recoding previous actions by subconsciously dehumanizing the victims of dishonesty. Let's pause right there. That really stuck out. The subconscious mind does not recall because of a conscious dehumanizing of the victims. So if, and, and, and we see this, and listen, I've never served in the military, but I have talked to people who have, and I've researched and read up on acts of genocide and acts of war. If you have an enemy, okay, you have to dehumanize that enemy. You cannot personalize that enemy because that will cause you to have a level of compassion for that person. So you can't think about their name. You can't think about their family. You can't think about their childhood. You can't think about their feelings and emotions because as a human being for you to now kill, maim, destroy um, another human life when you've given, uh, I don't know, so much thought into who that person is, that would be a whole nother thing. So you dehumanize them. And so we know that for instance, uh, in certain nations, when they've gone to war with each other, they've referred to their enemy as cockroaches. Because guess what? Who has compassion for a cockroach? You kill a cockroach. Let's go on. This is where it gets interesting. Moreover, forgetting wrongdoings of the past makes us more likely to misbehave in the future. Let's stop right there. We talk about this all the time. People who do not remember their history are bound to repeat it. This is why you can never forget. This is why you, you, you can't say, well, it happened in the past. It doesn't matter anymore. Why do we need to think about that? Stop thinking about that. Because if you don't think about it, then what's going to keep you from stumbling into the same scenario in the future? Because there is something called patterns. There are life patterns. There are historical patterns. There are behavioral patterns. There are relational patterns. And a pattern will continue to take place if we don't have a conscious awareness. And your conscious awareness now allows you to operate with intentionality. I can intentionally avoid or I can intentionally begin to do based upon my awareness of what has happened but if i don't remember my history guess what folks i am bound to repeat it again now there's another part of this and i had to bold this this is what it says it says we are social beings and our basic need for self-worth is affected by moral self views it goes on to say unethical behavior creates psychological distress and discomfort and unethical amnesia lowers it so not only does my bad behavior affect you not to, not only does my bad behavior put you in a dark place my own unethical behavior affects me it makes me feel bad it makes me feel low it makes me feel less than and so the only way that i can feel better about myself is to no longer think about it the only way to feel better about myself is to forget it interestingly enough in the book um by Dale Carnegie, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. In the first chapter of the book, it says that you should never criticize, condemn, or complain. In that particular book, it goes on to talk about how there are so many people in prison who will tell you that they didn't do it. They will tell you that they are in jail because of trumped up charges and they're not guilty of the acts or the deeds that they have been in prison for. Well, why is that? How is it that you have a whole bunch of innocent people in jail? You don't. 
but nobody wants to admit one's own wrongdoing. One would rather assume or believe or take on, I don't know, uh, the mental uh, mindset that they are the victim and they were victimized and they're a subject uh, to circumstances that were beyond their control and they should not be in jail. Think about this. Matter of fact, there was a study done on one of the greatest mobsters in the 1950s. And this individual was known for killing countless people. He would either kill himself or order hits out on people. This was a guy who stole money from individuals, from companies, drug smuggling, all of it. But he maintained his innocence, even in jail. And so oftentimes there's a conscious attempt to cleanse one's consciousness or through unethical amnesia, it, if, if somebody really knows what this is, the reason why they do it is so that they can feel better about themselves. So not only am I going to demonize and dehumanize the victim, I'm going to exonerate me of my own deeds and actions so that I could feel better about myself. Now think about what we're talking about here in the context of a relationship, because this is oftentimes how we show up. And this is why it is so hard for a betrayed spouse to heal because they're listening to the heart and the mind of their partner who did such a deed. There's no repentance. There's no remorse. There's, there, there's, there's no compassion. There's no empathy. It's almost like a justification and a minimization and, and an exoneration that one goes through. And this is what makes it difficult. And in this particular case, if an individual does not remember, does not recall, or chooses not to, uh, most likely this is an individual that increases the probability, not that they will do it again, but it increases the probability that they can do it again. If you first confess your faults, <laughs> even the scripture says that you must confess your faults to your brother. Now in this case, in the marital context, uh, part of the full discovery is confessing your faults to your spouse, to your partner, because it is healing for you because you're no longer holding on to the secret because when you hold on to the secret, you give it power and you give it power ultimately over you. And if you're holding on to a big secret, now you gotta protect that secret by telling more lies. And so now you're not just talking about a lie, uh, you're living a lie as a part of your daily life. And so what that does is it creates a breach of trust, right? A wedge that exists between you. And now the intimacy that you once had, now you're, you're far apart, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. There's more distrust. You can't come together and, and establish anything like we once had because you are unrepentant and you refuse to change. And so unethical amnesia, while it is plausible in certain regards, it cannot be used as a justification uh, to not confess, to not share the truth, to not engage in full disclosure. So unethical amnesia sometimes causes us to struggle with the details of the affair, but not having the proper insight keeps us from understanding the why of the affair. You see, these are two different lanes here and both are equally important. And once we're able to show up when it comes to the facts of the affair, but also dealing with the feelings of the affair, it helps the one who's been engaged in the affair. It helps the spouse who's the victim of the affair, and it allows you to move on in your recovery process.